Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. This here is the Greenworks Commercial CU800 UTV. So it's fully uh, electric. What's good about it, what's bad about it, we'll go through different things in this review. So let's start off with some stats. The overall length of it is three meters or 118 inches. The width of it is 1.6 meters or 63 inches. And the height is 2.05 meters or 80 inches. Overall weight on it, we're looking at 795 kilo, or that's uh, 1,752 pounds. We've got rear vision mirrors both sides, left and right. There's also an EWP 3500 electric winch. Headlights with the option of high and low. The charging port. The cargo bed is 1.17 meters wide or 46 inches. We're 90 centimetres long or 35 inches and the depth there is 28 centimetres or 11 inches. The maximum carrying capacity of the cargo bed is 250 kilos or 550 pounds. You've got a good sturdy tie down point in each corner internally on the cargo bed. So the tray tilts up. The electric motor is an AC induction uh, motor with peak output of 31 horsepower. It's powered by an 82 volt, 16 kilowatt lithium battery. Now the max speed that you'll get out of this UTV is 48 kilometers or 30 miles per hour. The range, depending obviously on the conditions, whether you've got hills or you're getting around on flats, is up to 120 kilometers or 75 miles. The ground clearance is 35.5 centimeters or 14 inches. The maximum carrying capacity for the UTV is 454 kilograms or a thousand pounds. At the rear, you've got the hitch there so you can put a uh, tow ball in and the maximum carrying towing capacity of the UTV is 567 kilos or 1,250 pounds. It has front and rear hydraulic disc brakes. The suspension is independent dual A-arm type. The rear tires on it are 28 by 11 to 14 and the front is 28 by nine to 14. And as a safety precaution, don't allow a chicken to drive this vehicle. So we've got a cup holder to the left of the steering wheel here. We've got our horn and we've got a heap of switches and our dials here. So our speedometer there is in miles per hour and also kilometers per hour. The switches, we've got uh, headlights on and off, high and low beam, four wheel drive or two wheel drive, uh, the front diff lock on and off. We've got hazard lights, we've got indicators. This one here is for forward, neutral, and reverse. And we've got our three different um, speed modes, I guess, for the better term. We've got high, medium, and low. Now, if you don't have the seat belts plugged in or, or you know, you're not wearing that, you can only go at, at roughly about 10 mile an hour or 16 um, kilometers per hour. So, you know, if you plug them in, then obviously you can go at those higher speeds. And we've got our winch in and out and the few plugs that we've got here. That's our just standard cigarette uh, lighter plug. But then we've got two USBs, which is obviously great because you can use that to you know, charge up your phone while you're driving along. Then over on the other side here, we've just got a glove compartment. Pretty straightforward there. And we've just got all the original manuals and everything in there too. So we've got our foot brake there. Then we've just got our standard brake an accelerator. So turning it on, they say to turn it all the way on and hold for a few seconds. And you should hopefully hear that click. So you can then let go of the ignition key and you're pretty much ready to go. Okay, so for this, we'll just leave it in medium. All you do is just press forward and away you go. So one of the best things about an electric UTV is that you just don't have that overpowering noise so you can easily have a conversation if you've got a passenger. along at about 35 k an hour.
So I've got it in low mode here, guys, and you can see on the temperature gauge, hopefully, bring it a bit closer there, hopefully we'll be able to catch that. So it's hot, it's on hot, so it is not going up the hill. So, you know, that is in the low mode, which they recommend. So yeah, right now you just gotta let it cool down and then start again. Okay, so we've been sitting for five minutes now. Let's turn this back on and see where we're at with that heat. Okay, so only down one, two bars on it. So let's see how we go. Take the foot brake off. Okay guys, as you can see from that previous clip there, I've had some problems when I take on five or six of the hills around here on the farm. And I took on the steepest hill that I had here just to test this unit out and it got up the hill, but it crawled, didn't it? It certainly uh, worked that motor. So guys, uh, what's happened now is this is a couple of months later that I'm filming this part of the review, is Greenworks have had feedback from uh, customers with overheating problems. So to get around that or help that, I guess, for the better term, they've installed this fan here just underneath the tray on the unit to obviously assist greatly with cooling when you're running this uh, you know, up and down hills. So I'll get to uh, more footage about that in, uh, in just a moment. So um, how does it sound? That's the big thing. So the first thing is I'll go to this clip now so you can hear how it sounds when you're in the cab. So as you can see, you can definitely hear the fan running now. However, when you're driving along in this unit, it sort of kind of blends out just with the general noise when you're going over the track. So the big question is, how does it go on the hills? Guys, it's improved, uh, obviously, in the amount of hills that I can take on, but unfortunately, I've still had overheating problems. So I'll bring up this clip now for you to take a look at, and I don't think this is a really steep hill as such, but I have uh, driven over five or six hills prior to taking on this one, and this is the result. See an error that comes up there when it overheats. <laughs> we we'll just have to let it sit here for a bit and cool down. Now let's talk about the charging time on this. Um, what I normally did with this, I mean, I've got 200 Ks on it now, so you know I've used it very thoroughly, is a lot of the time I'd come in from just getting around the paddock or I'd do a bit of uh, shooting of a night and then I'd just put it on charge for an hour or two and then obviously it'd just top it up. What you'll find is unless you're on a you know, massive uh, cattle station where you may be driving 20 kilometers down to the front gate and back, most properties you're only gonna be using maybe 10, 15 Ks in a day with this, you're not gonna use a lot. So it's very easy to come in and just top it up. Or if you run it all the way down, um, your charge time is going to be about uh, 10 and a half, 11 hours to have it fully charged. So just keep that in mind. So I'll just show you a clip here now of how the charging works. So with the charger, you can see the top of the charger there is flat. So there's only one way for it to go in. So you can't really mess it up. Then plug the power supply into the 15 amp plug, turn on, and then you'll hear the fan start on the charger and the light flashing red. So another question that you'll have is how far did I get out of a single charge? As you've seen in this review, um, I've loaded it up there with hardwood. I was driving around um, with over 100 kilos of hardwood in the back of the uh, tray. I've had passengers at different times as well. I also have this in four wheel drive around here. I haven't had it in uh, two wheel drive and I've had it in a combination of high, medium and low modes. So obviously driving up hills along undulating country, flats, etc., etc. So for me, I got 68 Ks. So that's nowhere near obviously the 120 that they advertise, but still 
with it in real conditions, that's what you can expect. So the headlights that come on these are acceptable, but they're not fantastic. So the clip here will show you the uh, low and high beam, but for me, I'd much prefer to be able to get a decent light bar, an LED light bar on this unit, so that I've got some real decent light when you're out in the darkness driving around on a property. Now, where this excels is from a hunting point of view. Um, as you've seen from this clip, like when I've set the camera up and I'm driving towards it, you can hardly hear this unit coming until it's virtually on you. So obviously when you're going out and you're chasing you know, deer or just going out trying to get some rabbits, um, pigs, whatever, it's fantastic for that because you can actually sneak up on game where there's no way you could do that with a diesel or a petrol uh, UTV. Obviously, they're being alerted from a greater distance that you're coming. So for that use, absolute thumbs up. It's definitely worth it. And I've got obviously enough payload in the back of the ute to be able to put a deer, a couple of pigs or whatever game that you're shooting that night into the back. So last of all in the wrap up guys is the price. So 39,990, so you're basically paying 40 grand for one of these at the time of doing this review here in Australia. Is that going to be worth it to you? This is the question that only you can answer. You've got to have a look at your setup. So for me, I mean, I'm, I'm fully off grid. So something like this is extremely useful. I can come in, top it up every uh, day after I use it. And I've got real um, you know, low ongoing costs as such because I don't have servicing and so forth that's associated with the petrol and diesel uh, powered UTVs. However, you're going to be paying that bit more as well. So you've really got to work it out to see if it works for you. So ultimately, guys, um, you know, complaints about it. Um, look, I wish it had more grunt to be able to get up the hills on my property, but the steepness of a lot of the hills on my property, um, you know, are pretty full on. If I'm in my ute, I'm driving in high four, um, sometimes low four up some of those uh, hills in first. Obviously, I'm not getting around in second or third, so they're decent hills. So I think I've done my usual and put the product to the test as much as I can so that you guys can make an informed decision on whether or not it's for you. Um, for me, the only other little minor bugbear, and guys, you know, I just show everything that annoys me. Um, the passenger side door on this is never closed properly and when I first had a passenger come in and sit down they were fiddling around trying to close it. Um, it you just have to lift it up and try to lock it in and it's fiddly. I know that's only a real minor bugbear guys but you know it's probably um, the only real thing apart from the power of the unit that I can possibly complain about. I mean you've got enough speed i mean 48 k's an hour for me around here perfect i don't need anything faster than that um, you know it's got a decent enough uh, payload on it however for me i think that if it's serious farm uh, work that you're looking at doing for me this isn't suitable i need something with a bit more grunt for my actual property uh, layout here but it may just be perfect for you and especially if you're looking at it from solely like a hunting point of view honestly this would be really hard to beat okay guys i hope you enjoyed the review so till next time we'll catch you then